But the top miss that you'll face as you start getting started is that nobody wants to hear from you. Like nobody actually wants to hear personal details about your life, like where your favorite place to eat is, um, where your, like what kind of coffee you like to drink, where you find your inspiration. That is actually not true. People do want to hear from you. That stuff does exceptionally well. People love sharing about that stuff. So please do share that. I can sell just as successfully from a personal account. So that's mostly directed at um, people that are representing a business. They're the head of their business. I would say that is not true. Um, for MLMs, if they, it's in their distributor agreement that they can't start up a Facebook page, then I totally understand. But I would argue that you do much better in the long term with a Facebook page for business. I can do this, all of this social media stuff without any automation at all, meaning I'll do it all manually. I would say that is not a great assumption that there are scheduling tools that you should use to make this happen. Um, I can do it all through automation. That is also false. You, um, what I, we suggest is actually that you set aside about four hours at the beginning of a week and do all of your schedule, all your posts at the same time, and then come back just 10 minutes a day, respond to people or interact with people, answer messages. That way, like while, for, for example, right now I have some posts that are scheduled. So while I'm sharing with you, I don't actually have to be on my social media doing that. So you really want to take advantage of that. Um, there is one provided by Facebook within your page and it is free. We will discuss that. Um, well, I tried it once and that's enough. Meaning like, oh, I boosted one post and it didn't do well, so I'm not ever going to try it again. I would argue that there are several different parts to a successful page and a successful <coughs> post. And if it didn't do well, there is a real reason behind it. You can improve. Try again. People will automatically flock to my page, meaning that I can set up a Facebook page and just expect like 10,000 people just to show up and like it because it's there. I would say that it is, <laughs> he's like, sold, <laughs> I want it. <laughs> um, that is extremely, extremely rare. Uh, I would say there's another one that says I can do it alone, meaning I don't have to share anybody else's post. I should do all of my own content creation. That is false. You should not do that. The number one way in blogging to get recognized <coughs> by other people is to have someone who's got a bigger audience than you share your stuff. So your relationships are super important, and we'll discuss that later as well. Um, I don't have to tell my customer what to do to find my product. Like people do not do not know what you want, and they're not going to take the time to be like, "Well, where can I find that?" You know, I'm just going to spend all of this extra free time that I have thinking about how I can do the vague thing that you just sort of hinted at. And I do think there is a way to talk about it socially, uh, where you don't have to say go to this link, but at least <coughs> one every ten posts, you should be telling them, "This is my product. Here's what to do." Let's see here. Comparing my page to others is a good idea. I would say comparing, no. Learning from, yes. Um, I don't have to promote. And I would say a lot of us have hit the, the place where our pages have kind of staggered in their growth. And promoting actually helps you overcome that.